Hey folks, it's Marvin Cash, the host of the Articulate Fly, and we're back with the last Steelhead Alley Outfitters Fishing Report of 2020 with Patrick Robinson. How you doing, Patrick? I'm doing well, Marvin. Good to be back with you again tonight. Absolutely, and I took a quick peek at your weather, and you know, that was a powerful snow dance you did because you got snow and rain and all kinds of good steelhead weather coming your way. Yeah, we're definitely, uh, we've definitely got the weather to match uh, what steelheading is known for at this point. And so how is that kind of translating into what people can expect when they get out on the water? Uh, you know, uh, honestly, uh, you know, we, we, we did get our first major snow uh, a couple of weeks ago, about 20 inches here uh, at, at my place. And, um, but that was really the only major snow we've had. All of that snow uh, has, has now melted um, over the, the last couple of weeks. Uh, we had some temps actually jump back up to, uh, the fifties for a couple of days, which was, uh, totally out of sight. Um, so what that has done for us here, uh, is it actually helped prolong things. So a, a typical year, you know, when I say typical, I'm going off of guiding for about the last 12 years, you know, typically we get up to around Christmas, new year's, and, uh, it's pretty much just about a done deal. You know, we start producing ice on an average year, um, uh, you know, mid to late December, and by about the beginning of the year, uh, oftentimes we're iced up and the game's over. Uh, you know, right now, to be quite honest with you, uh, today's what the 14th, we're the middle of the month. And, um, you know, we still had fairly mild temperatures. I mean, we haven't had a whole lot of freezing, below freezing temperatures. And so if we keep this weather trend, uh, you know, we could be fishing all the way into the new year. Uh, last year was unprecedented for us. Uh, we literally could have fished clients all the way through. Uh, the winter, which um, we didn't uh, end up doing. I mean, we did, uh, uh, you know, a handful of trips uh, in the month of January, but most people just aren't accustomed to being able to fish for steelhead that time of year. So they kind of, you know, think it's over with and it's done until, you know, until the spring run. But uh, I can't uh, emphasize enough that as long as those streams don't freeze, steelhead are in the rivers all winter long. So as long as those waters are flowing, uh, we can fish. And uh, so right now the weather is uh, is actually doing very well by us because we haven't had anything that's too uh, too ridiculously cold. Uh, nor have we had you know a week worth of lake effect snow because uh, that can that can change things overnight. You know it doesn't have to get down to freezing temps. We can just get you know a week worth of lake effect snow that drops four feet of snow and we can be done overnight. You know, um, but uh, as of right now things are looking pretty good and uh, we've got guides out on the water every single day. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're still rocking and rolling, man. Like it's like it's mid November. Yeah, that's really neat. And so to kind of, uh, help folks understand, you know, are the steelhead moving more towards their wintering holes or are you still getting like fresh pushes of water that you're getting fresh fish still coming in from the lake? Yeah. So anytime you get a push of water, which the, obviously the later we get into the season, um, diminishes simply because rain turns to snow. And, and snow doesn't bring a push of water, right? Um, but if we do get a push of water, so let you know, we just had this 20 inches of, of wet snow and then turn around in the next few days following that, we had, you know, uh, 40 degree, even up into the 50s. Um, if you have a rapid melt, obviously that's going to bring a push of water as all of that snow melts off quickly. So at, at any point that you get a push of water, there are going to be fish that are going to push in. Uh, you know, sometimes... Uh, people miss out on some of the best fish of the spring because they think that they need to wait until April to try and fish for steelhead. And they think that's when the fish are going to come in. What they don't realize is the first major, uh, you know, big snow melts and things that we had that, that bust up the ice typically on a typical year in the rivers actually brought, you know, huge pushes of fish in. And by the time people actually get out on the streams, uh, some of the best fish have already come and gone. So, uh, yeah we will continue to get pushes of fish. Um, you know, they may not be as, as big uh, a push of fish as you get early uh, in the seasons, uh, but we're definitely going to have fresh fish coming into the system. And as the water temperatures do drop, yeah, the fish are going to transition to more of the wintering uh, holes, uh, you know, the deeper slots and, uh, and that kind of thing. And so that is, you know, as our water temps are, are dropping, you know, I think last night we were down right around freezing, you know, hovering a little bit above. Uh, so 
you know, as those water temperatures get down closer to uh, to the freezing mark, you're definitely going to want to make sure that you're looking for them in the in the deepest spots. And if we get the warm ups like we did last week, 50 degree temps, you know, those those you know the water temps, especially if you got sun, uh, water temps are going to change quick. If you got sun on the water, um, you know, water temps can can jump up three, four, five, six degrees in a day if you've got the right conditions, and that that can make a huge difference in in, in the habits of those fish. But yeah, uh, as the water's cool, watch for them to uh, to be moving into those deeper slots. Got it. And we've got a question from Alex for you, Patrick. He wanted to know your suggestions on leader setups for indicator rigs. Gotcha. Well, I can uh, I can hit you with uh, a response on that in in two forms. Uh, the easiest way to do it is to jump out there and grab yourself a prepackaged leader from your local fly shop. You know, support small business. Um, we're all about supporting, uh, small business, especially during the holidays. And, uh, so you can buy yourself those prepackaged leaders. Uh, our recommendation to you would, uh, you know, most, most shops are going to carry that, uh, seven and a half foot two X leader. Um, so that will work just fine. What's even better is going to be about a nine and a half foot, uh, two X leader. And now if you are looking for something a little bit more, um, you know, custom built, uh, what I always run or, or ran as, as I guided clients, uh, was, uh, some handmade leaders and I would use, uh, Maxima, uh, to build my leaders. And what I would use is a 20, 15, 12, um, formula. So I would go, um, four feet of, uh, 20, three feet of 15 and two feet of 12. So, uh, do the math there real quick, you know, four, three, two, you got a nine foot leader, right? Uh, and then from the, the 12 foot butt section of, or the, uh, 12 foot, uh, terminal end, uh, excuse me, not 12 foot, uh, 12 pound, um, terminal end of that leader. That's where I would tie on my tippet. So I would go, uh, with about a foot of typically two X or three X, depending on what the, uh, current river conditions are. Uh, and then, uh, at that point, uh, I would tie, um, I would tie on, uh, the first fly, uh, and then the junction knot, uh, between that 12 pound and that two or three X, uh, above that knot is where the split shot would go. Right. And then, and then I would drop another foot or so of tippet off of the, uh, first fly off the bend of the hook to a secondary fly and then throw your indicator, uh, up the line, you know, or up the leader or wherever it, it seems to work for you. Now, some, uh, uh, some steelhead guides and steelhead fishermen like to throw a barrel swivel in there, uh, somewhere. I just never, uh, got accustomed to doing that, but I know a lot of guys do, uh, like to, uh, like to run the barrel swivels in there for different reasons. Um, you know, kind of a side note, uh, you know, I tell guys all the time, there's, there's no right or wrong way to do it. There's only what works for you, right? So find out what works for you and, and roll with it. There's, you know, as the old saying goes, there's, you know, a hundred ways to skin a cat, right? Uh, there's, there's a hundred ways to probably rig a leader, but that's how I did it. Uh, the whole time that I was guiding and I was very successful at that. So, uh, just real quick, it, it was, uh, four feet, three feet, two feet in 20 pound, 15 pound, 12 pound maxima, and then build it out from there with tippet. Got it. And is there a knot that you like for that 12 pound to your tippet connection? Um, since you don't use a barrel, uh, swivel or a tippet ring or anything like that. I just always use the double overhand. Um, I never got too fancy with my knots either. Um, double overhand, or I think they also call it the surgeon's knot. Um, it's, it's always been a solid knot for me. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot prettier knots out there than that one for darn sure. Uh, again, I just never, never, uh, started tying the, the fancy knots and I've used that, uh, I've used that knot for everything from, uh, stuff here locally to, you know, bigger fish down in salt, uh, you know, chasing permit and, and, uh, tarpon and, uh, and, and I've, it's always done well by me. So that's what I typically use. Got it. And, um, before we wrap up, I certainly want to give a shout out to our fishing uh, report sponsor, our friends at Norvice and, You owe it to yourself, folks, to go over and check out all the great stuff they have for the holidays at www.nor-vice.com. But even more important, um, you need to follow Norvice on Facebook and on Instagram because uh, Tim and Tyler are running a 12 Days of Christmas special 
where for the 12 days leading up to Christmas, they're going to have a product and a special. And the, and the products and the specials get better and better the closer you get to Christmas. So you owe it to yourself to check that out. I don't know if you've gone over and uh, given it a look. Have you, Patrick? I have, yeah. So uh, Yeah, looks good. Yeah, you're going to maybe pick up some more Magnum hubs for your vice? Uh, yeah, I actually just uh, just uh, got a shipment uh, with some new Magnums for the uh, the new uh, Legacy C that uh, that I got. So I'm ready to go on that. I, I did see in their 12 Days of Christmas, uh, they've got some uh, table clamps, um, which if, if, if anybody was following my social media, you know, my uh, the, the new Legacy is going to be used in my uh, in my travel kit. Either that, or I'm going to swap it out and put the uh, the C on my granite base and uh, and take my old Norvice and make that my travel kit. Either way, though, I did see that they had those table clamps, uh, which allows you to travel even lighter. And uh, so that's that's something that I'm I'm eyeballing in that 12 days of Christmas. So uh, yeah, definitely go check it out and uh, see what uh, what all they've got going on. They've got they got a lot going on. It's pretty exciting times for them. Yeah, absolutely. So again, folks, that's www.nor-vice.com, and from there you can jump to Facebook or Instagram. And every day heading up to Christmas, there's going to be something new. And like I mentioned at the top of the fishing report, this is our last one for 2020, Patrick. And I want to wish everybody out there a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas, Patrick. Merry Christmas to you, Marvin.